This is the Griffin Podcast, episode number 93. What is a fiduciary? As we continue in our buyer plan about fiduciary responsibilities. Are you a home seller or home buyer who has questions about selling or buying residential property? Or maybe you're an agent who needs a plan, but you can't find an easy way to get the answers. Well, then, hey, you are definitely in the right place. I'm Danny Griffin, the founder of The Griffin and the host of the Ask a Griffin podcast. And to help you take immediate action to get started in the right direction, if you're a seller, a buyer, or an agent, you can take advantage of our free step-by-step what-to-do guides that are waiting for you at griffincourses.com. That's G R I F. F-I-N, courses.com. All right, let's get started. In our buyer plan, question on the table is, what is a fiduciary in the context of real estate? So the first point here is to simply state it, a fiduciary, which is a, which is a word that you'll see, especially at a bank, an investment bank, uh, really when it comes to financial instruments, you'll see that word a lot, but will you really see it prominently stated in the real estate business? Maybe not, but it's very important that you understand a real estate agent is really under this this weighty term, fiduciary. And simply put, in its easiest definition, a fiduciary is a faithful servant or trusted advisor. Well, those are powerful words, a faithful servant to serve. And that's what this business is. We don't sell houses. We serve the buyer who, who needs to get informed so that they can make an informed and empowered decision. And we take those words very seriously here. Faithful servant, service. So we obsess at our company over trying to become the best prepared faithful servant. And what that does is it allows us to give good, solid advice. Because that's what you're really doing. You're not selling somebody, you're not pushing somebody, although, you know, this happens. These are issues in, in the industry where people, a, agents, real estate agents are undertrained, they're underinformed, they get nervous, they get emotional, just like everybody else in this huge emotional transaction. And really, it, it, you can have some serious problems. This is a massive financial and emotional transaction. Maybe the biggest that most people ever make in their lifetime. So it's not just one thing to be faithful faithful, and serve. It's another thing to be a trusted advisor or be able to become a trusted advisor. So the more educated or learned the real estate agent is, the more they can be trusted by the public. Now, to be able to do that, you have to be organized because you often have a very small window of time to begin to present yourself as a good fiduciary opportunity for a buyer. And quite frankly, these days with the internet, there are a lot of really smart people who are out there buying, running around with their phone, looking at the latest app, running to open houses, believing that if they just walk through the door and talk to the listing agent, especially in a hot market, uh, they can work a discount or they can get a leg up on the situation. That just makes everything in the mindset just a little bit more dangerous. It does. Because I think what's happening is you're discounting the value of having a faithful servant, trusted advisor, a fiduciary who's there for you. Because if you're just, and especially in a hot market, if you get caught up in the battle to win and you just think that walking through the door somehow you're going to win, well, you may or may not be involved in that trusted advisor, fiduciary relationship with that agent. You have, to, you have to really understand this so that it's explicit. And from state to state, it varies on some of the agency, but relatively standard would be a seller's agent, somebody's representing the seller, and a buyer's agent, somebody who's clearly representing the buyer. Now, on the buy side, which we're talking about here, that could be under contract or can simply be uh, a, a statement or a disclosure of agency representation. It can be that simple. But that's state mandated that you really need to sign that disclosure so that the consumer, you, are protected, right? So the consumers need to be protected in this disclosed way. Who represents whom? And where buyer agency was birthed out of was the fact that there were a lot of buyers waking up and there were a lot of lawsuits finding out that we had a very archaic system for years. I've been around this business long enough where it was sub-agency. So in other words, If I were working with a buyer and I walked into a listing, I become a sub-agent of the listing agent. Very archaic. 
There was no clear representation for the buyer. And then as buyer agency proliferated, well, then there was the obvious opportunity to get help from a trusted advisor on the buy side. Now, there are occasions where I myself will work as also a disclosed dual agent. And I want you to understand the, the, the litmus test for all real estate licensees and the bare minimum standard of behavior is that we represent all properties. And that's the next point here is that we represent all properties honestly and accurately. And we disclose any material defects that we are aware of. So even if I'm representing the seller, I can't hide the fact that there are faulty windows or there's a lawsuit at the building. And those are, that's a real situation I'm talking about right now. I have to immediately disclose that to everybody. Now, that, that doesn't mean I have to blow up the deal. I have to disclose it. And then representing the seller in that case, I need to explain it thoroughly. I need to make all resources available, whomever the parties are, where there are more questions that can be answered, asked, et cetera. So we're all under that obligation. To, to honestly and accurately disclose any and all material um, defects. And, and that's a tricky thing because this is a very sophisticated thing, a piece of property, especially one that might have waterfront and might have dockage or deeded rights to something, whatever it might be, or it's part of a massive building and there, there are lawsuits at the association level, whatever it might be. You have to do your best as an agent to be diligent, to understand the particular piece of product you're there. So as a trusted advisor, we can't know everything that's going on at every piece of property, but the minute that your buyer wants to know more about that property, it is your obligation as that trusted advisor and faithful servant, let's go back to that, to do the research. Don't be lazy. Pick up the phone. Call the association, pick up the phone, call the town or the municipality, get the answers to the best of your ability so that you can pre present all the material information, not just defects, but positive information about the property that makes the, the case for value. You want to you wanna be able to do that. And you, of course, as the consumer, want somebody who's that diligent or has a team that can help like that. And so I want to just say this as well. When it comes to this whole fiduciary responsibility, Caveat emptor is the Latin term for buyer beware. That's the, the point here is that you still as a buyer should beware that you're responsible for your own protection. And, and therefore, because you are responsible for your own protection, we really suggest that you look diligently for a trusted advisor in all aspects of a real estate purchase. Let me talk about that. I'll slow that down a little bit. What does that mean? Well, one... A lot of buyers are running around to open houses because it's an easy way to begin the process or they're really more so just going to that open house because today's modern technology allows for an app to tell you when there are open houses that might fit your, your interest and you walk through a property. And of course, the disclosure is that most of those people sitting there are representing the seller unless otherwise disclosed. So when you walk through that door, you can ask all the questions that you want about the property. And then there's a fine line where that trusted advisor can't talk too much about what the seller's motivation is or at all and disclose that. So, so you're trying to figure out all these things about the motivation and the property and you're trying to get yourself the best deal. Well, get yourself an agent because you have to understand what you think you're saving by running directly to an agent who has a listing could pale in comparison to what you lose because you're not better informed. Let's just say you walk through the door and somebody's willing to, you know, reduce it. I mean, there are companies that actually have that as part of part of their their whole business model. If you buy through us, we'll give you back X. Okay, well, great. How's the trusted advice I'm getting for that rebate? Because what if that rebate is one percent, one and a half percent? 2%. Does that mean the property wasn't overpriced by 5%? See how quickly the math adds up here? So how are you going to figure this all out if you don't have a trusted advisor? So we cannot more highly recommend that you at least think about this. And then furthermore, even after the agent helps you with what they're qualified to do, there are many other fiduciary responsibilities that come into play that are beyond the agent's capability. So they have to now orchestrate the home inspector. 
the attorney or title company, whatever it might be in the state that you're in, there is a whole collection of people that are required to become a trusted advisor to the buyer in this purchase. All right, let me go back and summarize this, okay? Question on the table today is, what is a fiduciary? So we're in our buyer plan talking about fiduciary responsibilities. And very simply put, the first point here is a real estate fiduciary, like any fiduciary, is a faithful servant service or trusted advisor advice. Second point here is all real estate licensees by law must present a property honestly and accurately and disclose any material defects that are in the property. And third, this is just simple. Caveat emptor in Latin, translated to English, buyer, beware. Nothing changes. You are still under the obligation to beware of your own responsibility in this major financial and emotional transaction. So because you're responsible for your protection, you should look for a true, qualified, trusted advisor, aka real estate agent, and all the other aspects of real estate require other trusted advisors who the real estate agent can suggest and recommend. All right, I'll summarize it this way. Real estate agents are allowed to enter into a buyer-agent relationship with home buyers and become a fiduciary subject to all applicable legal obligations. A fiduciary responsibility obligates the real estate agent to act as a faithful servant or trusted advisor. When engaging in a real estate purchase, it's critical to take full responsibility as an informed buyer and choose an agent who also has an extended team of other trusted advisors who will be required to complete the transaction. Okay, now remember, you can take immediate action to get started in the right direction if you're a buyer, a seller, or an agent who wants and needs help by getting a copy of any of our free what to do step-by-step guides that are waiting for you at griffincourses.com. That's G-R-I-F-F-I-N courses.com. Also, don't forget, of course, you could subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Or if you just want to go over there and listen to the playlist and listen to a couple episodes, they're all titled out so you know what they're about. We'd also, we'd also let you know that we post our content from this podcast on YouTube. There's a video version of this as well. So don't forget to subscribe to The Griffin channel on YouTube. And you can keep up to date on all the stuff there and pick and choose the episodes. We'd also appreciate it, of course, if you would share. Share this content with somebody that needs it. Home sellers, home buyers, agents, so that they get the help that they need. That's the reason for putting it out there for free. Free content is meant to be shared with people who need the insight. This is something we do every day and have done for a long time and have worked as trusted advisors and fiduciaries for a long time. We just want to make a better footprint. You don't have to do business with us. When you share this content, it's free to you, it's free to them, and hopefully it puts everybody in a better light in the real estate business. But remember this, nobody's coming for you. Nobody. So take action and get to work on a plan for buying or selling your next property or becoming a more successful real estate agent. And we'll see you in the next episode to help you do just that. Thanks again.